Hello YouTube and welcome to a new video. Today I want to try to talk to you about how to play chess. And this is a chessboard, as you guys may know. And we're going to go through how the pieces move and what um, pieces are valued in the game. So let's start with the rook. The rooks start in the corners, like so. And the rook can go upwards, downwards, to the sides, and um, like any direction, up, down, and to the sides. And it captures as any other piece except from one. We're going to go through that later. And what that basically is that you, you take and you land on the piece that you take or capture. So if there's a piece right here, you can't fully go all the way to a8. You have to stop at a5, but you can capture it right there. So the rook can go all the way um, to the side and up and down the board. Now, let's go to another piece called the bishop. The bishop starts on the C and F files. This is C file, this is the F file. And as you can see, this is A, this is B, C. So notice the little, um, what, oh my god, my English sucks. <laughs> but yeah, um, the letter, oh my god. Thank you so much. E, D, E, uh, F, G, and H. So it's eight squares that way, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight upwards as well. So that means that it, there's eight here and eight here, 64 squares in total. But the bishops can go diagonally. So the, this light squared bishop here can only move on light squares, only these here. And the dark squared bishop can only move on dark squares. So that means that these two kind of fulfill each other and they complement each other. So if these two are close, they can both attack so many squares and no piece wants to be in those um, arrows, so to speak, because then the bishop could capture it. Let's say this bishop goes to h6, because that is a diagonal, right? Then you could actually capture that bishop. And again, if this bishop moved here, you couldn't move over it, but you could capture it, like so. Um, so that's the bishop, basically. Let's move on to the knight. The knights start at the B and G file, for both white and black. <laughs> and the knight can move in an L shape, like so, or so, or even this way. So two up and one to the side, or one up and two to the sides. And that means that a knight in the middle of the board has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight squares to go to, right? And a knight on the side of the board has one, two, three, and four. And a knight in the corner only has one and two squares to go to. So the knight, a knight in the corner is really, really bad because it has no way of getting anywhere other than those two squares but yeah let's say the knight moves here and then my knight moves here then the knight could capture it black's knight could capture my knight on d2 and let's say my knight moves here now well black could then then move and take this one as well that's not favorable for us, is it? But uh, let's say it's like this. 
and we want to trade down a knight and we're playing this move right here now black has the option of capturing let's say he does that then we are going to take back because we were actually um, <laughs> oh my god my English is terrible right now I don't know what to say yeah, we are protecting our own knight. <laughs> so if this black knight takes on g5, then we take back with our knight. And that also means that if this knight ever moves to f7, like so, we can take it with our knight. So that's the knight, and it's worth 3 points. And the bishop was worth 3 points as well, and the rook is worth 5 Let's move on to the queen. The queen starts on the d file. A white queen starts at the white d, a black queen starts at the black d, or the blue d in this case. <laughs> and notice that every single time you start a game, even though if you don't have the a, b, c, d, e, f, g, h, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 um, notation on the board that you have, or on the mobile phone app that you have, or on your computer or any any device whatsoever or console you might want to have a light square on the right hand side of you down on the light right side for both colors so if you turn this uh, upside down this board then black has um, a light square on his right hand side and white has his down here on his right hand side. But the queen moves basically combining the rook and the bishop. So these are all good options for um, white's queen. You can move all in all these directions. And the same goes for black's queen. So we can go here then let's say white moves here and then if black goes here black can't really do anything about us capturing his queen but we can't move over it we have to take it before we go here and that is kind of what every piece is all about so now you know that the queen moves exactly like the bishop and the rook combined Let's go to the next piece, which is the king, which starts on the E file. This is the E file. The king can only move one step at a time, but in any direction that it wants. The same thing goes for black's piece, of course. The same rules apply even if you're white or black in uh, any given position. But yeah, that's pretty much the king. Notice that this king <laughs> can't go any further up the board right now because then it sets himself in check. And check is actually just an attack of your king. So if the black king were to step to e7, that would be illegal actually. It's not allowed. But if, <laughs> if it was allowed, then white could just simply capture the black king. This is also a check. Remember that the bishop goes diagonally. This is a check because the knight, an L shape, attacks what it goes to. And this is a check. The queen attacks the king. And notice that the king can't really take the queen because the queen is protected by the king. So if he takes, then we take him back, right? That's not something you should or try to do because it is it, it is in fact illegal and you could lose the game if you try to do that do that in a tournament. Um, yeah, I actually believe Magnus Carlsen did something like that, leaving his king in check uh, and just keeping uh, the attack going on his opponent's king. And then his opponent said and stated that 
but your king is in check. You made an illegal move because it didn't move your king or something like that. And then he was it was declared a loss for Magnus Carlsen. But uh, after a while, the arbiter said that, well, in fact, that is, this is uh, losing for the other person because he was making an illegal move first. But we're not going to go th into that. So here we are, uh, all the pieces lined up. The one piece we haven't talked about yet is the pawn. And the pawns are aligned on the second and seventh rank, as you can see here. So the pawns can move one or two steps um, when it uh, is in starting position. But um, once it gets there, let's say, black moves here, it can only move one. Now it can't go two steps forward. And let's say black plays this move as well, then white it is white's turn. And white would really like to just capture that, right? But that is actually not allowed, because with the pawn you can only capture diagonally in front of it. But let's say black plays this move after white plays here, then White can simply take. Now it is legal to take a pawn, but you can't move and take a pawn right in front of your own pawn or any other piece. If the bishop was here, you couldn't take that either. But if the bishop moved here, you could take it. That's kind of neat, don't you think? <laughs> Anyways. There's another pawn move that is called en passant. And what that basically is, is when your pawn moves two steps forward, you can take it as if it only took one step forward instead of those two. So notice that this move, you can take it. And if it plays two moves, you can also capture it. Kind of strange, right? Maybe. I don't really know. I haven't really thought about that much. But as a matter of fact, if black plays this move and you play your knight, let's say, to f3, and now let's say black develops his bishop to g7. We're not going to go through what bad and good moves are, but um, I can say that this move is kind of weird. But now you can't really capture that pawn because this pawn now has already done its job. It's sealed shut everything. Uh, you have to take advantage of the en passant rule once it happens. You can't do it later in the game. That also goes for if black plays this move, now white plays here, and if black now plays d5. He only took one step this last time, so you can't take it as an en passant right now as well. So that is en passant and that is the pawn. Let's say the knight goes here, uh, or let's say this happens. Then we take the queen, right? And now let's say this happens. Then the pawn takes diagonally. Diagonally in front of its own pawn. Not to the side, not straight forward, but diagonally in front of it. Um, let's continue with another rule called castling. This is a um, pretty weird move that says that your king can actually do something else and only step one square at a time. In this case, white can take two steps with his king, jumping and the rook that was standing on h1 actually jumps over the king and lands on the opposite side of the king. It is called castling, or just to castle. And it brings your king to safety. It gives space for the rook and opens things up for your pieces that it, they can come more alive in the game. Uh, it's not only this way you can castle. You can also, after this move, castle um, this way right here and that 
is the same idea. Your king steps two squares to the right or left and your rook lands on the opposite side of the king. The only thing you really have to consider is if this bishop right here was placed on g5 instead. <coughs> because if the king has to step inside a check, it is not allowed to castle. And if the king is in check, it's not allowed to castle as well. You have to deal with the threat first, and then you can castle. Or if the rook, let's say, the rook has moved and lands back on a8, it is not allowed to castle, simply because you can't move any of these pieces before you castle. So that's that's the castling rule as well. Now, I know that I haven't been such a good um, um, team player. I haven't really talked much about the rules of chess. So let's go ahead and deal with that as well. This is the king, and it can place it can be placed anywhere on the board right now. And let's say he white gives a check with a knight on f3. So the objective of, of the game is to actually checkmate the black king and that is something that uh, attacks the king but doesn't give the king an escape square or escape route. So if this is a check because the knight is attacking it then the king could move, right? Or if this was a bishop instead from here Let's say black had a pawn. He d didn't only have one move. He can't just think that he can move his king. He, he has to consider also this move, playing his pawn upwards. That stops the check and also attacks the bishop on g3. So that is a check. And let's go to a checkmate instead. So. This is called a checkmate. And why is that? Well, the king can't really capture this queen, right? As I mentioned earlier, if the king captures, then the king captures back. So that's illegal. And if um, the black king tries to go anywhere on these squares, then the white queen will simply take it anyways. He has no legal move and he is in fact in check. That is checkmate. Uh, what about this position right here? I want you guys to really think now. Now black can place his opponent, which is, which is white, here on e1. In checkmate, in one move. Three or four different ways, actually. There are four different ways to put him in checkmate in one move. <clears throat> now, first off, you have to consider this move, as I mentioned earlier, uh, when it's, it was White's turn. This is a checkmate. And the king can't step anywhere because it's still a check. And if the white king tries to take the black queen, then the rook is guarding it, so the rook would then just take the king back, so that's illegal too. Uh, are there any other checkmates? Well, we have this move, that checkmates black's king. The king can't step anywhere, he can't step further down uh, on, this, on the zeroth rank, <laughs> and he can't go upwards because of this rook, and the queen is guarding the first rank, so that is also a mate. And this is a mate, the same idea, and this is also a mate. Just keeping all the squares available for the black, for the white king, and available for him. And in fact, if white, if black were to play this move, that is actually not a checkmate. Do you see why? Well, white could just simply take it. King captures f1. And now he has a job to do. Black has a job to do here because he really needs to give a checkmate. But he just gave, gave away his most valuable piece, which is the queen. And it's worth about nine points. 
and the points are worth uh, equal to a pawn. So one point equals one pawn, so to speak. But um, the rook is worth five points, the bishop is worth three points, the knight is worth three points, and the queen is worth nine. The king doesn't actually have a value because it actually can't be captured. When it's captured, the game is over, right? But uh, for the sake of this, we're going to say that the king has about three and a half, at least in the end game where it gets more active, uh, because it can really be a good piece to have uh, attacking and defending your position. <coughs> but uh, yeah, now this is a weird position, right? Black and white here. Everyone is um, kind of happy, but it's white's turn. But the material is even, right? White has one pawn and black has one pawn. But white can go one step further. Black does the same. But now, once the pawn reaches the final eighth rank, or black reaches the h1, or first rank, then you can promote to any piece you'd like. So now you can promote to either a queen, a bishop, a knight, or a rook. In most cases you would prefer the queen, because that is the strongest piece and the easiest one to maneuver around. But in some cases you want a rook, a bishop, or a knight, because it actually makes the job easier, or um, doesn't stalemate, which is another idea that we're going to talk about in a bit. But right now, white queened first, so if black now tries to queen right now, he's one step um, away from queening. White could simply play this move, queen to g2, check, attacking the black king, and also attacking the black pawn. And that is called a fork. And a fork is just simply a double attack. And it can happen with any piece, actually. So after the king moves, he has to react to it, right? He is in check, so he has to step away. Then we take the pawn, and he doesn't have anything to promote now. That's kind of neat. So now we just simply have to give a checkmate in the future. But let's talk about the stalemate. One stalemate that you should know about is this stalemate right here. So let's say you wanted this position right here, which is a checkmate, right? Uh, and let's say you moved your you had your queen here, and you simply went to a8, and your queen went all the way up here. Although this is a mate, if the queen went to g8, again. The king has nowhere to go. Um, it is still in check in any possible way there. But let's say for the sake of this um, illustration that the queen goes to g7 instead and the king goes to b8. And now the queen goes to d7. It doesn't see that he has a checkmate in one on b7. It could go here, but it, he went there instead. And now white plays king to a8, and black doesn't see the mate again. He just wants to be a bit rude to his opponent. So he plays his queen to c7, again trying to lock as many possible uh, squares away from the white queen as possible, white king as possible. The only problem here is that white now have no legal move. It can't go anywhere. And he is actually not in check. This queen is not checking the white king. And that is called a stalemate. <laughs> the only thing is that if white had this pawn, let's say, now it would not be a stalemate because white has another option than just simply moving his king. He can move his pawn one or two steps upwards down the board. And now black could give a checkmate on b7. But since this pawn is not actually there, <laughs> it 
so happens that this is a stalemate. But um, yeah, another stalemate that can occur is this stalemate right here. I'm sorry, <laughs> this right here, which is kind of bad because the king can't step up somewhere here because of the rook. The rook is covering all those squares and the knight actually covers both of these squares. So all the squares around the white king is covered by black pieces and it's a stalemate because the, black, the white king is not in check. If this bishop was here as well, then that would be a checkmate because he is in check and he doesn't have any uh, anywhere to go. But if this bishop was here instead, this is a draw. And a drawn position is divided by half a point each. So if you want to win a game, you get one point if you do. And if you get a draw, you have a half a point each. And if you lose the game, you get no points. That's the principled uh, <laughs> um, thing to deal with, at least. Some tournaments and some um, online chess sites operate otherwise but that is the principal idea of dealing out points for for a win a draw and a loss and do I have anything else to say about the pieces right now so yeah the knight as I mentioned earlier um, can step over its own pieces it uh, is not restricted by its own pawns as this bishop are uh, right now. The bishop can't really move anywhere because of these pawns on the g2 and e2 um, squares. But once a pawn moves, it opens up for the bishop. The same with the queen. The queen can't really go anywhere if its pieces are in the way. The same goes for the king. The king can't go where his own pieces are and yeah the only thing you have to worry about is this knight when it comes right here on this uh, square because right now like not every time of course but in this case he is threatening to make a fork and remember that um, a rook is worth more than a knight and now white is in check so if you try to do anything about this you lose a rook if you move here he takes if you move here he simply takes again kind of bad <laughs> and sad actually um, it's it's super frustrating when that happens and a fork is a tactical shot that you should really really look into if you want to play chess it is such a valuable thing to know about but uh, that's pretty much it I hope you guys enjoyed it um, I'm gonna make another video uh, later that is gonna talk I'm gonna talk about openings and something to worry about and something to consider when you're playing but right now just just try to feel the pieces try to understand how they move and how they work and what is check what is checkmate and what is stalemate checkmate wins the game that is pretty much all you need to know right now so yeah see you guys soon bye